I've never been a big fan of artificial sweeteners, not because of the purported cancer effects, which I don't think have any merit, but because they basically have not done the job that they were supposed to do. They have not cut into the obesity epidemic. And of course, that's why people take these sweeteners to try to lose weight. But now there's another concern that has arisen. In a study published in Cell by uh, researchers from the Weizmann Institute in, in Israel, and Cell is one of the most reputable journals in the world, uh, what these researchers found was that uh, when they gave uh, artificial sweeteners to people and they studied aspartame, sucralose, saccharin, and stevia, that uh, for two cases, that is in the uh, instance of uh, sucralose and saccharin, there was uh, an increased chance of glucose intolerance. Now, what does that mean? Glucose intolerance is measured by having subjects drink a glucose solution and then taking blood samples to see how quickly the blood glucose returns to baseline. And if it does this very slowly, it can be an indicator of diabetes or, or pre-diabetes. So it's, uh, it's something that we don't want. You don't want glucose uh, intolerance. But, uh, of course, uh, seeing this glucose intolerance uh, raises a question. What is causing it? And at the same time, these researchers discovered that there was an alteration in the gut bacteria of these subjects. Now, the human body has about 30 trillion cells, but we are also host to about 39 trillion bacterial cells, mostly located in the gut. And numerous studies now have shown that these are not just innocent bystanders, that they actually affect the workings of the body. So we had a situation here where there was an increased glucose intolerance in people who had a change in their bacterial flora. And glucose intolerance means that there's a lot of glucose in the blood. The body is then pumping out insulin from the pancreas, and insulin uh, release results in fat storage. So it can be associated with weight gain. So this is a situation that needs to be looked into. However, a change in gut microbes together with a change in glucose intolerance is just an association. It does not show a cause and effect relationship. But in this instance, the researchers went one step further. They took gut bacteria from subjects who had shown a trend towards glucose intolerance and fed those bacteria to mice that had been raised in a sterile environment, so they were free of any bacteria. Yes, these mice were literally fed, you know what. And interestingly enough, the mice that had been treated with gut bacteria from people who had shown glucose intolerance developed glucose intolerance themselves. That's pretty interesting. So what do we make of of this? First of all, the study was short-term, and it most certainly did not show any kind of weight gain associated with the taking of artificial sweeteners. It is of academic interest, to be sure, just the idea that gut microbes can be affected by taking artificial uh, uh, sweeteners. But it most certainly does not mean that sugar is a better alternative. What it does mean is that the best idea is to limit consumption both of sugar and of artificial sweeteners. But if you're going to choose an artificial sweetener, at least according to this study, aspartame and stevia would be the ones that would be favored. So it is indeed an interesting study, but it has no great practical importance. And as we always say, more research is needed. And that for today is our Cup of Joe.